get over here as well. I've got this big thing for all the antenna wire I made. Just haven't had the time to install that outside, so that's gonna put something on a clip on the end of it and just use it indoors. I've made a loop, pulled it tight, and looped this copper wire in this other wire loop, and pulled it tight together. Now I'm gonna attempt to solder it. So, yeah, put this on the tripod. Right, we always see if I can get this to work. Hopefully, it works. Hit the junction up there. Getting there. Might be a little bit too hot there. Yeah, I've got a tip on this, I think. Put a tip on, might make it a little bit neater. Sometimes that method works as solder, but it doesn't seem to be working for me today. So, yeah. Stort the hard way, this takes ages to warm up. Yeah, just trying to get the damn thing to light. It's working, it's a lot. I'm going to heat it up with a big blowtorch just to hurry it up. Just having a time for this thing to line up. That's so what I hate about these little soldering ones, they take a long time to heat up. They're okay when I mean, you don't need them, but when you need them... Ah, oh, come on. There you go. Get some more solder on that if I can. Sit it on there and heat this junction up here. Should be alright now, so let's see how that goes. It's stiff, so as long as that's a stiff connection, I've got a good connection. That's good. That's my indoor antenna all done. Switch it off. There you go, have yours. Indoor antenna that just clips onto the mast of your radio antenna. That's about 14 metres long of thin wire. So, yeah. Just wind it up as I don't need it. And clamp it like so. Done. So, yeah. If I got time on, I get a test and see how we go. So, yeah, getting a bit cold lately. Gotta give this trusty old Brahma, or Brahma, electric, electric hand. It's just a um, brand marketed by Brahma, but good quality stuff. 240 volt, 50 hertz, 2400 watt heater. Now those little Chinese pieces of shit you buy in the Rejic shop and that are the same wattage rating as this. So, they call this energy inefficient, those people got something wrong with them. It's got off, low, one, two, three, four, high, low, and that's just for a fan only, so it's pretty good. Heavy duty switch, got a good heavy duty cord with a Clipsal 439 series plug top. Good old stuff, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be pulling this apart and giving it a clean, because when these get dusty they smell bad. But yeah. I said 2400 watts the same thing as those little Chinese heaters you buy. So now I'll try and get this out of the plastic bag and we'll start taking it apart. Now these can be portable, as we've done here. And you can see there's little hooks here. Well, this is actually designed to be bolted onto the wall of your house and hardwired. But we like the option of having it portable. 
So it's pretty damn good. 2400 watts as I said, so you can plug it into a normal 10 amp unplug. It's not going to do any damage, so. Got a nice stand, handy little gap at the back where the wires are normally go. We stored a cord to it. As you can see, we've got the earth connects to the front panel, which we've got to fix that dent up. And you can see all that 20 something years of dust, which just gets inside the heating element in here. It just makes a big smoke bomb. So you've got to clean that for safety reasons. Because that old, old, old dust is likely to um, catch fire if it builds up enough. So it's best to clean that to minimise our risk. I'll do this. This is probably the easiest screw to undo. Obviously you've got to ground it. It's good that they've grounded the front half here. As you can see, a little, little. We must have spilt something on it. Mm. Yeah. When I was little, or my brother was little, one of us did that when we were little. That's how old this thing is. Push this dent out. Oops, too much. I'm going to fix this anyway. Take that dent out with the pliers and straighten this panel out. Get this as straight as I can get it. There's your switch. Little uh, uh, xenon light. The fan's pretty well easy to turn. That never goes bad to bearings in there. Shaded pole motor. Now under this, this will open up and there's that spring in there. So that's the heating element itself. I'm going to open this garage door because this is going to make a big dust bomb. Got to bring this outside on that table and yeah, we give it a blow out. Trusty little Fixed up the air compressor, the manifold broke off because it was made of just crap. So I redesigned it, put the tap here on the tank and itself. That had to be fixed because the spring rusted away and jammed open, so I fixed that. Put a new dump valve on it because that had a buggered only. Put a new, to redesign this manifold. Fixed the run cap in it because the run cap, the connections internally. It's just a plastic jar that with a lid that snaps on and the capacitor sits inside that. But it was a really bad solder job in that, and the vibrations, as it rattled actually, snapped off the terminals inside. I was able to re-solder that and jam some heat-proof rubber under it against the motor stator to stop that from um, vibrating. And it seems to have fixed it. So yeah, let's get this heater going. Okay, viewers, this is a dusty heater. Whew, that dust. 20 years of, well, probably more than 20 years worth of dust in here. Yeah, such a fickle force will make those things bend outwards. You don't want to do that too much with these drum fans. And that's how loud that bloody thing is. Very loud compressor. Yeah, that stuff gets in the heading of it and starts a fire. Sucks into here, okay, so there, in there, and out there. I'm gonna plug this thing and test it outside because it's gonna burn all that loose and dust and smoke everything out. So, best to clean these old heaters up before you use them again. Bloody thing. Gotta be fridge compressor converted when this thing buggers up, but yeah. <laughs> That's something to consider. As you see, I was blue, blue inside that heating element there. Just flush it backwards and forwards with the air. Get everything dislodged out of this heating element area, including this little thermal cutout, which I did. And it looks brand new, and there's no chance of anything getting caught in there and burning up, so. 
So you get this switch working here. It's a bunch of cans and rotating contacts. Good quality stuff. Now I'm going to plug it in and test it. Now if there is anything that I doubt it's going to smoke, but if it does smoke, it's in here outside and not inside the house. So let's give it a test. Alright. Let's try on high. Mmm, I don't smell that old familiar smell of burning dust anymore. Any of it, whatever, doesn't get that hot unless you block the air to it. That's the actual part of that smell. I've got a power bump to it. All the electrical connections are good. Nothing's come off, nothing's burnt out. So, yeah, it's, it's good to go. So, yeah, no smoke, all clean. Time to put it back together. But I've got to fix this up first, so. There we go, let's push it out, get a screw up and bend that up, and that'll come back out. Get a flat screw up and I'll fix that, and it should be all done. Hmm, yeah, there used to be supplied by the electricians, these heaters too. So yeah, I'll straighten that out, taking this out, straighten the grill out. Nice and good. That goes back in. Like that, wedges in there, put those screws in here on an angle. Used to be made in South Australia, these heaters, before they moved to China. No, oh, I just did this off camera, guys. Hang on, I'll do this in a better, better way. All good, nice and straight. It's a lot better than what it was, but yeah. Bubbled the sticker up, got a bit hot there. It's wood grain plastic coated, I love that old colour. Nice old vintage colour, now I can put this back together. Tested good, no smoke. Yeah, back on, do the four screws back up in the bottom. That's it, she's all back together. So yeah. How uh, much square was it? Oh, I thought what the left square was. That one is it there, yeah. That's tight. Always make sure your earthing connection is tight and good connection. Now I've got to disalign. Pop that cord through. Watch your anchor. It's anchor's caught like I just did. So yeah. And there's one there, there's two there, so this, that one's in with the top. I'll hold this thing straight now, we'll do the bottom ones first. Do the harder ones first and then start with the easy and then do the easy ones. Oops, too tight.
This one's a bit hard to get in. There you go. And then a top one, a lot of top ones up for me. There we go. And I put them in. Yeah, you can see how you go put it together. But yeah, you get the good idea, so yeah. It's just all cleaned and... Yeah, thanks for watching.